What's going on everybody? Come back, we're going to talk about September, the month of preparedness. What's going on everybody? This is Patrick Midton Outdoors. How's my outdoor crew doing today? Hope everybody's having a fantastic day. And hope you had a fantastic Labor Day weekend. Um, me and myself, I didn't do a whole lot. Um, the wife and daughter did. And they went somewhere pretty cool. And we will be bringing that to you probably next week sometime. So, well, Tuesday. Um... What I want to go over with is this is the month of uh, preparedness. Um, every September at the same time, the whole month is the month of preparedness for disaster. Disasters don't wait for you to be ready. So, um, I'm going to throw some pictures in. Um, I'll throw one in right now of the one that's on the Tennessee website as far as for preparedness for um, disasters and stuff disasters can come in all shapes and forms whether it be weather whether it be an earthquake um, man-made disasters uh, as we've seen you know when the pandemic started where you couldn't get toilet paper and stuff like that that's a man-made disaster um, there are some other things too that could happen that you know you need to have stuff ready if everybody gets quarantined again you know say later on in the winter they say we're shutting the whole country down for you know two weeks are you ready for that so also we'll get into the disaster type stuff as far as tornadoes which we get around here uh floods we get those too um, drought we get those from time to time you know up north well I'll take it back down here if you get a snowfall of more than six to eight inches around here we're shut down we are shut down for a few days depends on how the weather changes now up north you guys are more used to it but when that onset of a blizzard hits you gotta be prepared to stay indoors and do what you got to do now I'm going to go through the basic list, which if you go to my website, midtownoutdoors.org, you'll find links. There's a uh, post about preparedness month. You'll find links to two of these lists. Um, I highly recommend you to you know download them if you're new to this. And if you don't have a disaster kit, then it's time to get one. Um, you never know. For instance, um, what was it, up in Iowa and stuff like that, they had that big windstorm come through, uh, basically like a hurricane on land. And, you know, it shut some things down there for a couple of days. So, if you have supplies in hand, you're good to go. But I'm going to give you a real quick rundown of this. Excuse me, because I am cheating a little bit. Uh, one gallon of water per person, per pet, per day. For at least three days now some will tell you to stretch it out five to seven days preferable you know so you're thinking of a house like ours of four so it's a gallon of water per person so that's four gallons for one day times five that's 20 gallons of water now you may be saying what am i going to store that much water in well if you don't have the availability of storing that much water they do make these things that go in your bathtub, but you can fill that thing up before the power goes completely out or the water company quits working. And you can fill that up and you've got enough, you know, I forgot how many gallons it holds it, several gallons. Uh, you can do other things such as a water barrel, you know, keep a water barrel in your house full of water. Um, a little extreme, but, you know, some people go to those extremes. Um, at least three day food supply for everybody non-perishable foods now here's something else I recommend if you got a freezer sitting there with meat in it start cooking it cook as much as you can um, you know that stuff only lasts so many days you know only like a day or two in a freezer that's not running anymore um, flashlights I keep flashlights everywhere i mean i'm seriously there's a there's a flashlight beside me there but there's flashlight in the kit 
all of our kits and um, so yeah and keep extra batteries for those things now battery powered slash radio no radio or a hand crank I highly recommend a hand crank and I'll show you one right here it's about 20 bucks on Amazon pick it up they're worth it I've got one I've used that one quite a bit um, matter of fact we've actually taken it camping in places where I didn't know if I was gonna have electricity or not and we were able to crank it up and listen stuff we had a storm come up didn't know it was coming because at that time I still didn't have a smartphone so I had dumb phone but I was able to listen to the local weather forecast and figure out, you know, how bad the storm really was. Um, of course, like I said, extra batteries. First aid kit, that's important. Uh, you got to have first aid kits. I have first aid kits everywhere in this house, and plus in my emergency kit. But in case of a tornado or something of that nature, there's going to be flying debris. You may get hit. Somebody in your house may get hit, and you need that first aid kit. But none of that, but you should have first aid kits in your house for your family members, for everyday boo-boos and stuff like that. Um, important medications. Okay, old farts like me. Got to have our blood pressure medicine. Got to have our diabetes medicine. You know, any of the medication like that that you may have to take daily. You make sure you have enough of it and have some of it saved to where something happens and your normal supply gets damaged or something of that nature. Matter of fact, I'll give you an instance. Um, tech I work with, or works for us, um, when they were he was moving, somebody moved his insulin in something that was not cold or kept cold, and it all got ruined. And that's about a thousand dollars worth of insulin he lost, and that that's that's a hit. All right, whistle. Um, Back if I can get this one off without causing great despair. This is a Fox 40. They're like a couple bucks on Amazon or something like that. This thing's loud. I'm not going to blow it because it'll frick with the microphone and stuff. But um, here's the deal behind whistles. And some people don't understand uh, why you want to whistle. Why can't you just yell? Yelling takes energy. Also, if you're in a situation where you can't yell the loudest, you can still blow this whistle. And this whistle is way louder. This one, I think, is 90 dB. I think. I think that's what it is. That's pretty loud. Somebody's going to be able to hear that. Even if you're under you know, a pile of rubble, somebody's going to hear you blowing that thing. Like I said, you try to keep these kits where you can get to them no matter what. Interior room, interior closet, something of that nature. Um, that way you can always get to that stuff. Okay, um, moist toilets, uh, something like a baby wipe, uh, something of that nature, just for cleaning up and purposes and stuff like that. Um, garbage bags for personal sanitation. If you're wondering about the garbage bag, well, if the plumbing's screwed or the plumbing won't work, get yourself a pail, put your garbage bag in it, do your business. Wrench or pliers for turning off your utilities. I'm going to show you something right now that you can pick up off of Amazon. It's a multi-use tool that can shut off gas, can shut off water, can break glass if you need to, different things. Uh, it, it's really, it's worth it. I've got two of them. I keep one in my truck. I also keep one here in the house. Um, manual can opener for foods. Everybody should have a manual can opener. I've got, I've got one in my kit. I've got one in my uh, um, chuck box over there. I've got one in the kitchen. Uh, it just, uh, and I've got, got them on my multi tools too. Learn how to use them. That's the main thing. Learn how to use that thing. Local maps of the area. You may know it well, but if you're new to the area, you want local maps so you can figure out where things are. Most of your hospitals. Uh, clinics, stuff like that, are labeled on most maps. Police departments, schools, because schools end up being shelters, so you know where those will be. Cell phone with charger and solar charger. Uh, also, I would recommend some of the charging packs like Anchor makes. I'll put a picture up of an Anchor. I'll actually link one up above that I use and love. I mean, I, I love that thing. Cash. 
They say driver's checks, but does anybody really use driver's checks anymore? I don't think so. Cash and change. It's important to have change and cash on you. Got it on you. Um, that's a simplified list. Like I said, that list will be on my website. Make sure you check it out. www.mid10outdoors.org and check that list out. Now something else, and this is on there too, is important information as far as family communications. Um, not going to go over all this. It's out of town contacts, you know, uh, neighborhood meeting place, regional meeting place. And when they say neighborhood meeting place and regional meeting, meeting place, if there is a disaster, for instance, Chase right now is in Gatlinburg as I'm filming this video. He's coming home right now as we speak. You know, he knows to come here first if something was to happen. Say a tornado touches down between now and the time he gets home. He knows to try to come here first. We also have a outside of the house meeting place which would be our office because we're family owned building, you know, hopefully the office is safe. We can meet there. Um, that's our second or backup location to meet. Uh, all your work information, you know, if nobody knew this, they'd know where you work. Most people know where everybody works. School information for your kids that are in school still. Family information, your social security numbers, important medical information for each person in the house. Like I said, I'll show you that real quick, but I also have it on my website. Uh, medical, um, medical information, your doctors for like my doctor, my wife's doctor, you know, kids' doctors, that kind of stuff. Insurance information, you have your medical information in a box, and then your homeowner's insurance. Uh, rental insurance have that on the sheet too. I also recommend if you have these sheets print them out put them in a plastic baggie that way they're in your kit. Also make a couple different ones. I would. I'd make a couple different ones of these. Put, them, put one in your kit. Put one in your cars. Also what I have done is I've got all this on a flash drive that stays with me all the time. I also have a flash drive that's in my safe in the house that has all that information on it. Now I'm going to go over one more thing, a little bit more on this. When you build your kit, make sure every six months is what I would say. Um, some of them say every year at this time. I would say every six months. Drag everything out. Make sure everything works. If you have food in it, that's the time you need to swap it around. It's time to change it out, put new in. Put the old and eat it up. Um, most food these days, and I've kind of noticed this on some things, that um, you can find um, stuff's lasting a lot longer than normal. But that's all that preservatives and stuff in there. Um, but I still recommend you know replacing it every six months. Check your, if you got battery operated stuff in there. Check it. Make sure it's still strong. Most of your batteries these days have a ten year lifespan. Uh, that's from the triple A's, double A's, nine volts. All of them have a 10 year lifespan. Check the dates on your batteries. Make sure they'll, they'll be okay. Time to re, you know, to move them on too. Um, if they're getting within a couple of years, you know, time to replenish them and put new in and take those out and use them in your remotes and stuff. Um, but anything you take out, make sure you put back put something back in its place you can improvise you can add stuff to your kit um, I would suggest if you have a kit for a family if you have young children make sure you put some you know toys or something to keep them occupied because uh, a time like this if the house is destroyed you have to go to a shelter you want them to be occupied with something um, so anyway that's that's pretty much I'm not gonna go any further than that I might make a separate one on the vehicle um, letting you know the things you keep in a vehicle just in case but for now this is it for this video I do appreciate everybody watching I, it's a long one but it's worth it because this is about being prepared for the next disaster whether it be man-made or mother nature alright guys thanks for watching and as we always say be prepared